diagnosed with PCOS at 27 years old, I'll admit, I got a wee bit obsessy and channeled my inner Nancy Drew. Hello? Hello, Ms. Ramos. This is Google calling you back with your search results. Oh, hey, Auntie Google, what's up? So I searched polycystic ovarian syndrome and so much came up. Tell me everything. Well, listen. I know that you already know about which foods to eat and which to avoid. Roger that. I produced a video all about it. And I see here, according to my record, that you've already done 3,482 Google searches on supplements for PCOS, workouts for PCOS, and how to spell convenience? It's a hard word to spell, okay? I before C, never before E. Anyway, what else? There has to be more. There is. In fact, you asked the question. Yeah, is PCOS an autoimmune disease? I have the answer. But you'll have to stay until the end of this video to find out. Are you ready? If so, let's do this. Melissa Ramos, nutritionist with a background in Chinese medicine, serving you up all the goods when it comes to hormones and autoimmune conditions in a classy, sassy, and a bit of a smart assy kind of way. Now, before we dive in, I just want to be able to remind you to subscribe and remember to hit that little bell button. That way you get notified every single time a new episode drops every Wednesday. Okay, so in this video, you are going to learn the answer to, well, is PCOS an autoimmune condition? Plus, of course, I'm going to be giving you some tools in addition to that. And I realize that this video is a wee bit controversial, but I believe that PCOS is a highly misunderstood condition. This is likely because PCOS is a multifactorial condition meaning that there are multiple layers to it. There are different forms of PCOS for starters, and not everyone who has PCOS will struggle with insulin resistance and weight gain. Many women are often diagnosed via ultrasound only, and this isn't enough to diagnose the condition. However, what's coming to light more and more is the question of whether it's an autoimmune condition or not. Now, you might be watching this video and wondering, what exactly is an autoimmune condition? An autoimmune condition is where the body mistakenly attacks itself. <laughs> In an autoimmune disease, the immune system attacks parts of the body, like the joints or the skin, for example, as foreign. It releases proteins called autoantibodies, which attack healthy cells, although some autoimmune diseases attack only one organ. For example, type 1 diabetes damages the pancreas. Other diseases, like systemic lupus atherotematosus, attacks the whole body. In Hashimoto's, the immune system attacks the thyroid. In PCOS, we know that it's an estrogen-dominant condition, which I'll circle back about in a bit. For all females, including those with or without PCOS. Transient and reversible changes in antibody levels and autoimmune response does occur during different phases of our menstrual cycle. But in the cases of high and prolonged estrogen exposure, the chances of developing an autoimmune condition increases significantly. In fact, women with PCOS are five times more likely to develop antibodies against their thyroid. So in other words, women with PCOS have an increased chance of developing Hashimoto's, an autoimmune thyroid condition. When you have an estrogen dominant condition, you will also struggle with low progesterone levels, and this hormone would otherwise act as an anti-inflammatory. Low levels of progesterone can cause an overstimulation of the immune system, which can then produce more estrogen, leading to more antibodies. High concentrations of anti-ovarian antibodies were found in a group of PCOS women, suggesting that immune response is associated with PCOS. And just a side note, these high concentrations of anti-ovarian antibodies is likely the reason why so many women with PCOS struggle with conceiving. Speaking of antibodies, women with PCOS were also found to have anti-spermatic antibodies, which means that they'd be producing antibodies that attack a man's sperm. of these antibodies is likely due to inflammation, which we already know is a part of the PCOS profile. So yes, PCOS is associated with a plethora of autoimmune conditions, but is it actually an autoimmune condition? Well, check this out. A study published in the Gynecological Endocrinology found that the Indian women who were studied and who also had PCOS were eight times more likely to test positive for anti-nuclear antibodies versus healthy controls. Now, if you have no idea what anti-nuclear antibodies are, don't worry about it. I'm going to explain it. So this can be seen on blood work with the acronym ANA. 
A. And this helps doctors to diagnose various autoimmune diseases. So this study would therefore suggest that autoimmunity may very well play a role in PCOS. I mean, this is pretty remarkable in the fact that while yes, further research is needed, this certainly does help to open up a new chapter for future research. Okay, so what the heck can be done? For starters, as I've said off the top, PCOS is a multifactorial condition. One thing didn't cause it. I've actually listed out what those causes are, plus some tools that will actually really help in my free PCOS 411 guide, so make sure that you grab that by clicking the link in the comments. However, an amazing place to start is with the gut, because a leaky gut is associated with all autoimmune conditions. One of the biggest offenders is gluten, so get it out of your world pronto. And no, this doesn't mean that you have it once in a while. It means that you remove it completely. I would also highly suggest adding in Mega Mucosa, which is my favorite leaky gut support. It helps to repair a damaged and inflamed mucosal lining. I like to add in two scoops into a liter of water and I'll have that with or without food. Next, check for hidden gut infections like yeast, viruses, bacteria, and parasites. Because of low progesterone, which remember acts as an anti-inflammatory, women with PCOS have a greater chance of developing various bacterial infections like H. pylori, which can then lead to parasitic infections and small intestinal bacterial overgrowth also known as SIBO. From a food perspective, balancing your blood sugar is key. This means staying hydrated, getting enough sleep, eating enough fats and high quality protein. I always suggest getting roughly about 90 grams of protein per day. So what's best is to find out where you're at currently and to measure that, just to be able to gauge where you're currently at. Next, move your body, which can make you more insulin responsive, which is the goal when you're insulin resistant. This can also help to improve the health of your gut. But with that said, rest when needed because I want you to really focus on being committed rather than feeling trapped by consistency. These are just preliminary steps towards PCOS healing, which yes, I do believe it's possible to heal PCOS. I am 43 years old and I am PCOS free, my friends. Listen, there's only so much that I can actually share with you in this short little video, so please make sure to go grab that free PCOS 411 guide, which outlines way more tools. You can grab it now by clicking the link in the comments. And listen, if you dug this video, then do me a favor, give it a thumbs up, tag a friend, share it, subscribe, and hey, leave me a comment below and let me know what you thought. Until next time, see ya.